what is in my hospital bag or what was in my hospital bag because that was 12 weeks ago today. So I took two massive bags with me. So I had this pink one, which had stuff for the baby and snacks, really important to have snacks. And then I had this massive gym bag because clearly I wasn't gonna go to the gym. So massive gym bag and that was stuff for me for before and after birth. Um, separate to those, I took this pillow and not necessarily this pillow, but I took a pillow and oh my goodness, that was like the best decision ever. I thought it was gonna be like overkill and be really weird, but I'm so glad I took it because it was so comfortable to just, just be able to put in between my knees when I went to bed and like we had like a 10 hour wait after I gave birth where we couldn't do anything and obviously other than look after the baby um and my husband had to sleep on the floor like he asked if he could and they're like yeah do it so <laughs> he slept on a little weird mat thing on the floor um and used the pillow and then like it was just so much comfortable more comfortable to have this pillow so I'm so glad I took it thought it was overkill but like the best decision ever so i like to pack for every eventuality and oddly what happened was not even in the list of what i thought could possibly happen but we'll talk about that another day so planned for everything and that could possibly happen so i felt like i could win and it was all going to go smoothly so i'm really glad i packed everything that i could pack so my bags were chock-a-block <laughs> the one thing i took for before birth which is the best thing in the world is this stressful i cannot recommend this enough like i just happened to have this in the, in the house and remember like a week before i gave birth and i was having contractions for like three days so i was like oh go easy in this bad boy everyone in the hospital like that's such a good idea because i find if i was squeezing my husband's hand if he was like i don't know scratching his nose or going to get me some water i was like i need a hand <laughs> give me a hand so i'd squeeze this ball and it just it was just so good to have it and i felt like i was really in control just being able to be like squeeze the ball so i would highly recommend this like if this kind of thing works for you like this is the best i didn't really plan for any like candles or anything like that because they have them at the hospital anyway um but i was only in there for like three hours before i gave birth so and i closed my eyes the whole time um so anything could have been going on in that room and i wouldn't have a clue apparently the lights were dimmed who knew it was like 2 30 in the morning so didn't have a clue what was going on so i did do like a playlist but it was more like a joke playlist <laughs> like i don't know when i would have put this playlist on because it just happened so quickly and it was only after the fact that i was like oh yeah i didn't even think about like the candles or the lighting or the music like anything like that because it was just so quick um so that's like the one thing that is like gold i took way too many clothes for me so i literally just stayed in one vest top the knickers that the hospital gave me and stockings which was like the most sexy look i could ever hope for um so all the clothes that i'm about to read out i just did not use so <laughs> maybe like when i got changed to go home two nursing tops that i just forgot i had i wish i'd known because they were like they were key two pairs of socks one bra three pairs of pants like normal pants um as in knickers two vest tops, one t-shirt, a pair of back leggings, a pair of loose clothes, and what I actually wore to go home with, that was a hard sentence to say, um, a long jumpsuit because no waistbands for the win, and like a, just a normal really loose flowy vest top. So this top is basically what I wore in hospital the whole time, I didn't wear a bra on underneath because you know, easy access, could not be bothered, and I forgot I had a nursing bra with me, but it happened. Um, then on the way home, I popped over these little dungies, they didn't have a waistband, so everything felt really, really comfortable. Um, on the inside, obviously the bump was weep, way out here. And then to top it all off, I had this. <laughs> it's a look. It is a look. Outfit of champions. So yeah, that stuff I just I just didn't need. But if I needed it, it would have been useful. But no, I think I should have just planned exactly what I would have worn. Um, because the bump theoretically gets smaller um, and just no waistbands. And <laughs> I packed way too many clothes. I feel like comfort is key. So... I bought all this stuff because I thought if I'm gonna be in pain, even if it's like a day or a week, I'm happy to spend the money and be comfortable because like you just don't know how com how uncomfortable anything's gonna be. So if you can plan for stuff, it's gonna make you feel more in control. And that's the kind of brain I have. So <laughs> like, I just wanna be in control. So first of all, I bought this. I don't know why, but this was the one thing I was like, I must buy this. So this is your, I don't know what they call it, um, basically your water spray. So when you go to the toilet, you can use the water and help clean it. It's not like it doesn't burn when you wee. Um, I didn't use it. My stitches were not on the outside. And then I also bought spritz for your bits, which again, I was about to use and I didn't use because I actually asked the midwives if they had a padsicle and it was just the best thing 
like the most comfort in the world. If you like get a chance, make them for yourself in advance, put them in the freezer, ask them when you get in the hospital. It's like a maternity pad that's frozen and then wrapped in like a J cloth and then you can put it in your knickers for like five minutes. Oh, it's just the best. Like I can't even describe how much comfort that brought me. I was there like, oh, this is the best thing ever. Like that and when I was brought a cup of tea, like those two, obviously the birth, obviously the baby, but like afterwards I was like, oh, this is amazing. So like, so good. Um, I didn't know what to bring in terms of like maternity knickers, maternity pads, stuff like that. And I went rogue and I went wrong. So I bought, hmm, these had bad reviews, so I should have known from the start. So I bought a pack of seven disposable knickers from Mama Jojo Baby, I think. Um, they're at Emma Jane Maternity. Um, they were bad, a bad choice, like to be mistaken for a hairnet, I feel. Um, but they were just really tight. Do you see how tight that is? Like really tight here. And then like really baggy, but like too baggy. Like, like why would you need something this tight on your waistband and really loose everywhere else? And I just felt like I couldn't get a pad in there. Like I tried it for a day and I was like, no, nah, these are going in the bin. Not even for a day, probably for like an hour. Um, yeah, so I packed these, didn't like them. In the end, I just wore what the hospital gave me, which is these ones. Like these are the dream, they're so comfortable. Like they have no seams, it's really like loose at the top. Like, yes, this is the best. These are tenor and they are an extra large. And like, I made the mistake of buying my normal size because that's what you do with pregnancy clothes a lot of the time. But this is an extra large. Like, I just don't know why I didn't even think of buying an extra large because comfort, comfort is key. So these ones are what they gave me and what I wore. And I bought myself the same, I thought, for when I got home. <laughs> oh, what size are these? I think these are small because I didn't realise these ones were an extra large. And just look, the... <laughs> oh, it's like they're for the baby. So I don't know if you can see the difference, but this is like the waistband here of one of them. Like, this was a small, but look how small the legs are. Like, this genuinely looks like it could be for the baby. But that's that's the thigh holes, and I couldn't even get my legs in there. That was ridiculous. So this was a wasted purchase that theoretically could have been great had I gone for an extra large. So yeah, if you can, ten or extra large for the win, like the dream. So is there what the hospital gave me? Um, and that was just to show you. Then they're the ones I didn't use. Why I bought two packs of these? I don't know why I bought two, two packs of these. I should have tried one first of all. Here's one I made earlier. This is my cube. Well, one of my cubes, and in here. <laughs> You're gonna laugh at me for this. So in here, these are the maternity pads that I took because I didn't know what size to take. I didn't use these at all. I ended up when I got home buying reusable ones. Like I thought they were gonna be really, really gross and really disgusting, but actually I felt the cleanest ever and obviously you wash them. Um, so this, the purple is roughly the size of the one that the hospital gives you. And then this one is the one that I bought. Like, it doesn't even fit in the knickers. Like, these are maternity pads, but it just doesn't fit. It just doesn't fit in your knickers. So, like, this size is plenty. Like, this size, like, I just I couldn't even fit. So I took five of those with me, as you can see. And I also took some breast pads. So I got these for free. These are, like, the disposable, like, shields. They're, like, tracing paper to your nipples. Don't do it to yourself. If you're gonna get them by the reusable ones, disposable, just they're just mean for your body. I actually didn't need them at all in the hospital though, so like I wouldn't pack those. I took a little no harm nipple balm bottle thing and I've only used it once this whole time, um, not in the hospital, because the midwife said just to use your own milk. So when the milk comes out, just rub it on your nipple if your nipple's sore. Like, it's free, it's, it's the best, just use that. Who knew that your own milk would do the trick? Not me. So I also took this little, I say little, this ginormous wash bag with me. I thought I packed it really well and actually I hadn't because I'd packed a different wash bag with all my useful stuff in at Christmas time and I packed my spare stuff in this one and the spare stuff wasn't great. So wash bag wise, I had a toothbrush and toothpaste which were key, it made me feel so good. I had a shower after I gave birth but I forgot to pack any like shower gel or hair, like shampoo or anything like that. So I was just like, this is this is, this is the saddest shower in the world. Also, to make it sadder, they have a mirror in front of the shower. That mirror you can only look into from in the shower. Why, why they think I'm gonna wanna look at myself in the shower after I've just given birth? Like, maybe you do, but for me in that moment, 
I had other things on my mind. I had other things on my mind. So that was very bizarre. But anywho, um, if I were to pack it properly, I would have two fresh toothpaste, um, lip balm, I would have a hairbrush. I forgot a hairbrush and my hair is naturally very curly. So any pictures of me after birth, my hair is like, it's big. Um, shampoo, conditioner, shower gel, dry shampoo I did take. I didn't need, it was too far gone at that point. <laughs> it wasn't going to save me. Moisturizer, deodorant, anything that you would naturally normally pack in your wash bag. Like you don't need a lot because it's not going to be like a half an hour shower. I don't know if you have half an hour showers, but it's not going to be a big shower. It's going to be like, let me refresh kind of a shower. And then obviously clothes for when you get out of the shower, like big baggy clothes. Entertainment wise, I bought myself a book and a laptop. I didn't look at either of those two things. I barely even registered that they were in my bag um, because everything so happened so quickly. And then after I was in hospital for almost two full days afterwards, but I had a newborn there and I wanted to spend time with a newborn and I was so tired that if like my husband had her, then I'd just go to sleep. So I didn't need any of that. But again, if I'd been induced and had been in there for a lot longer, I would have needed those things. Um, so I'm kind of glad I had them, but they weren't useful. Um, but two things that were the most useful, oh, I, was, I, looked a, I looked a fool. So I brought a dressing gown with me, which is this fluffy orange thing. And I brought some cow slippers with me, which already in itself is an amazing look. But what you don't know is that what I was wearing was a red and white stripy vest top. Those maternity knickers, these white stockings with my cow slippers dressed with this dressing gown. It was quite a picture. I looked fantastic, as you can imagine. Now, I only use those for the shuffling trips to the toilet. I know it sounds really stupid, but I didn't dress myself properly when we were in the hospital. I should have done, thinking about it, but it was so hot. I couldn't even like consider putting on any more layers of clothes. So I literally just had the sheet that was on the bed over me the whole time. And there's people coming in and out, checking like how your breastfeeding's going, things like that. So it was just more of a hassle to wear clothes than anything else. So <clears throat> I only wore like this when I went to the toilet. This oddly is much shorter than I realized. So I probably would have gone for something longer or like a flowy dress I think I would have changed next time. But it was actually really nice just to have the comfort of a dressing gown there. So that's kind of the only like luxury thing. But I used it all the time. Like every time I went to the toilet, I, I wore this and I'm so glad I brought it with me because I wasn't going to. Um, so pillow, slippers and dressing gown, like I used something about my slippers. I was gonna take flip-flops with me, but because I was in stockings, I didn't have the toe freedom to be wearing flip-flops. So I'm actually really glad I took slippers. Um, I looked an absolute fool, but I could actually wear them. Whereas if I was in flip-flops, I would have had to like cut the toe out or like take them off every time. And like, that was far too much effort and I had to leave them on anyway. So like, that's something to think about maybe. Everyone always says to take straws with you, but I don't know why, like even to this day, I'm still not sure why I would take a straw because I'm still gonna need the cup upright to drink into it from a straw. But this, like I can fill it up so much. I'm gonna drink some now. Not for show, but cause I need it. But this I filled up so many times cause I, I had like a cup that was about this big and had a small jug. And because I had a catheter and you have to go for, to the toilet a certain amount of times in a certain amount of time. So I just was like, right, I'm downing this. <laughs> and I kept having to refill it again cause it was so hot. So I'm glad I had that because otherwise I would have been getting up every half an hour or so just to refill that little, um, the little jug that they gave me. So I'm so glad I had this. It was just much easier to get a big one, fill it up and then just keep filling it up. So I'm glad I took that. Something I didn't know was that you were always asked about the baby in terms of like how often they feed, how long they feed for, how many poos they've done, how many wees they've done, how frequently, stuff like that. So you, you need to write it down. And if you can write it down, it's just so handy when they come in and ask you to be like, oh, this is it. So then they can write it down. So either take like a little notebook and a pen or do it in an app. Um, and I did it in, I think it was the what to expect app. I did the breastfeeding one. And then I think I did nappy changes in a different one, but I'll, I'll look it up and, and I'll find out for you. Um, but having that in advance made me less stressed out because I think I, if someone had asked me like, oh, when did the baby last feed? And I hadn't written it down, I'd be like, I have no idea on space and time right now. I don't even know where I am. So <laughs> I'm glad I had that like sorted in advance. Like that, that was easy. Because it was the depths of winter, I had my coat in the car and we just left it in the car. Um, and otherwise I had kind of, that was kind of all I brought with me. Okay, let's move on to the more exciting stuff, the stuff for the baby. Um, I massively overpacked because I didn't have a clue what on earth I would be bringing for the baby. So I will read you up my list and you'll laugh at me. So I took three bodysuits, five sleep suits with the little fold over mittens, two hats, two pairs of socks, 
one jacket, one blanket it says, but I actually took three blankets. Um, three muslins, 22 nappies, one pack of wet wipes and a sanitizer. So sanitizer you don't need because it's everywhere in the hospital, or at least it was because of COVID times. Nappies we definitely used. We didn't need 22, but we were in there for two days. So it was, it was actually really nice just having them and not having to ask anyone for them. And the wet wipes we obviously used. So I just took a pack of nappies. So I didn't want to like bring like, oh, I'm just gonna have 10. You can only poo 10 times, only 10 poos for you. So I didn't like, I didn't really know how many to bring. So I just brought a packet with me, packet of wet wipes. And that was like key. So we dressed the baby in one cellular blanket and then one thicker blanket and just swaddled her the whole time. And that is what she wore the whole time she was in hospital until she went home and then we dressed her properly. So all of the sleep suits, the body suits, socks, etc., that I took were not necessary at all i should have just taken like two or three blankets and one going home outfit um and i only say this because we didn't actually pick a going home outfit we were like uh, this thing so that's like what she wore coming home in so i think they're in this drawer still your baby will need a hat when they're in a hospital the midwife put popped this little hat on the baby as soon as she was born i didn't even know like it had happened i don't know where it came from but this hat magically appeared um and she wore this throughout her hospital stay whenever she would tolerate it um, and then we brought this one for when she went home because it was february it was winter um, and we actually took another hat like i don't know why i thought we'd need so many hats i didn't know we were going to get given this one to be fair but um we just had this one for her going home i think this was one of the ones she wore at first so we had this little sleep suit and they have the little fold over bits for their hands so we thought instead of taking loads of mittens with us we could just take that instead um, and like i said we only dressed her to go home so we, she wore that to go home and she wore this when she was outside. We went home at 11 p.m. So she needed to be warm for the little walk. So she wore this. <laughs> and my husband said, as he dressed her, what kind of an idiot buys a double rested jacket for a baby, for a newborn? And I said, that would be you. So <laughs> he found these six little jackets, uh, six little buttons, a little bit fiddly for a newborn, but you know what? She's super cute in this and like they were adorable pictures bringing her home so i have no regrets about this whatsoever i mean it was really pricey it was far too expensive for what it was but you know that's going back in the drawer of things that no longer fit her so blanket wise we just took these cellular blankets so these ones with the little can you see the little holes in i don't know if you can see but they have holes in um and then a little zebra um doozy as well and like i said that is what she lived in so those two blankets wrapped in each other in the little hat and the hospital was so warm and it would have just been far too fiddly because there's people constantly coming in and sort of checking her nappies or checking her body or like fiddling with little bits and like constantly getting her in and out of a nappy when she's a newborn like I don't really want and she's like this like trying to get her arms like to lengthen out <laughs> it's like it was just it was a lot of effort and she loved being swaddled because she'd only just come out of the body so she's already like I'm good to go swaddle me so I'm glad I'm glad we did that in terms of like muslins and things like that I can't really remember what we actually used but I'm glad I took them because muslins are always useful so I would still pack some muslins I don't really know like what I thought would happen with them but I just bought some muslins and um, something I didn't know was in our bag that my husband brought was this little monkey completely unnecessary but like she had <laughs> she had no clue what this was she couldn't even see it I'm sure um but for our sake it was very entertaining to have a cute little teddy mon te monkey teddy monkey um next to our teddy monkey um so <laughs> that was nice just to have a little bit like of something really cute with us so for the baby we just used wet wipes nappies we had one sleep suit that she went home in we had a woolly jacket for when she was outside we had one cellular blanket one other blanket and then a spare blanket that we rotated in and out i think we took nappy bags and maybe didn't use them because the, the bin was close enough to me so i just put everything in the bin there I think that was about it. So like it was massive overkill. Three body suits and five sleep suits. Two pairs of socks. The sleep suits just have feet in them anyway. Like what was I thinking? I don't know. But anyway, they were all folded up in those cute little like bags like this. So they all had a bag within a bag. So obviously you need to take the baby home. We had the car seat in the car and top tip from one of our friends of ours who we learned from them um, was to get your car seat ready and installed before you need it. So you don't faff around at like two in the morning trying to learn how this car seat works in advance of getting to the hospital make sure it's in there make sure you know how to use it get it in get it out how to use it safely etc get that plan in advance like it's quite exciting to go through it and, and use it all we left that in the car until we were ready to go home so my husband again covid visiting hours he came in when he was allowed to came, come in he took some of my bags down to the car when it was time to go home and then he brought the car seat back so we didn't have a massive trip with all the stuff because it would have been way too much so when we did leave it was just us two and the baby in the car seat 
I obviously also took my own bag with me. So people are saying to bring cash for the parking, but our parking is you can pay on your card anyway. So that was fine. There was a cafe in there. Again, you can pay on your card. So that was fine. Um, I had Vaseline. Vaseline was key for me, like always is. I was on the gas and air like, Vaseline, more Vaseline. <laughs> like, so yeah, Vaseline was there. Uh, I needed that. I feel like I'm towards the end of my list. I took pregnant care as well because I knew I was going to attempt to breastfeed so um, I wanted to make sure that I was still getting those in and I finished up the pack that I was using then went on to the breastfeeding ones um, and I'm still on those now you know if you if you miss a day or two it's not gonna be the worst thing in the world is it <laughs> like after everything you've just been through oh my goodness I always thought to talk about snacks 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 okay this was a big one um, so I didn't know what to take with me for snacks like I love a good snack I ended up just taking four naked bars my husband took some like cereal bars for himself i always had my bottle of water i also had four bottles of lucas aid sport like the energy one not the fizzy one um i think i drank two of those i definitely ate all of my snacks and got more snacks so i after birth i wasn't allowed to eat for 10 hours um so i hadn't eaten for almost a whole day at that point i think um, I was really hungry and the midwives came in and were like cheese sandwich no you can't eat would you like a cheese sandwich you gave it to my husband but he he didn't eat in the end so I was there at like maybe two in the morning the next day I didn't realize I'd elbowed this sandwich because it was on the bed and I put my elbow in and I was <laughs> like so desperate for food my husband sent me a picture of this like massive like Indian takeaway that he'd bought and I was there eating this cheese sandwich that had an elbow imprint in it but I tell you what that was the best cheese sandwich like I've ever eaten, that was fantastic. And then I like squirreled my way through everything else. We ended up getting a muffin from somewhere and all these naked bars. So I was there like every hour in the middle of the night eating all these snacks, because I was up with the baby anyway. So I thought, it's snack time, it's snack time. And then some delicious lady came in at maybe six or seven in the morning and brought me a tea. And it was a fantastic experience. Um, I didn't want to overpack too many snacks. I had plans of bringing like fruit, but we had dinner just before we went to the hospital. And then the, I couldn't really eat anything, but then the baby was here so soon. So I didn't really eat anything before, wasn't allowed to eat anything afterwards. And then um, I just sent my husband down to the cafe and he, he could go home and, and shop and bring more food back for me. So depending on how long you're in there, either bring loads of snacks with you or plan that your partner, whoever's in the room with you is gonna bring loads of snacks or has the capacity to bring you loads of snacks. Half the bag for snacks, it was fantastic. So one thing that was really important to me and I'm so glad I packed it was a little um, power bank for the phone um, because I was taking so many pictures of the baby because my husband wasn't there and I, like I was sending him them and he was texting me back and like, having like very short quiet phone calls because I didn't want to interrupt anyone else like you're allowed to make a phone call but um, it just wasted so much battery and then obviously telling him when he was allowed to come back into the hostel and if he needed to bring me anything snacks that <laughs> was really important so I went through like I was on like 1%, like I'm on 1% and it was like five minutes before he was allowed to come and visit. So that, I didn't actually use it, but I'm like, uh, knowing that I had it was really handy. The only reason I didn't use it was because my bag was like the other side of the room and I couldn't be bothered to get out of bed at that point. So I'm really glad I had that. So in terms of all this stuff that I have that I packed, I massively overpacked, but I'm kind of glad I overpacked. The only things I didn't take that I wish I had taken was firstly just to look through my wash bag a little bit better and take a hairbrush, make sure I knew I had a hairband bigger knickers because the ones that I brought with me weren't good but luckily the hospital gave me them but that's kind of the end of my list so of all of this stuff I'm really glad I took my pillow my slippers my dressing gown I am glad I kind of packed as much stuff as I did pack even though it was way too much stuff like it fit perfectly within two bags other than the pillow so I'm glad I took it so if there's anything that you like you know what I need this as a home comfort it's going to make me feel good either in labor it's going to make me feel good when the baby's born just take what like you need to take for you the reason I didn't use too much of the stuff was because my bags were a little bit too far away from the bed so if I'd only had like one little suitcase and I could bring it closer maybe I would have used more but I'm quite happy with what I packed like some of it's ridiculous like you just don't know what's going to happen do you so I've learned now like these ginormous maternity pads are not good but it's bigger than the sanitary pads but smaller than this maternity pad here like those kind of things would have been great so you live and learn. I hope that's given you some sort of idea of what on earth to pack in your hospital bag. Let me know what you packed in your hospital bag that was the most useful thing, even though you maybe didn't think it was going to be useful or something that you thought was going to be useful that you did not use. Because I always find that really interesting. And I will see you on another day.